meeting and we are assuring the house that we've learned our lesson and we have not repeated and we will not repeat it moving forward. Thank you, Anna Buche. So, uh, Acting Chief Director, if I take your submission, what should be the punishment that you want the committee to recommend? Anna Buche, I would plead that you caution us to go and sin no more. <laughs> you, as a ministry, have paid an auctioneer who didn't do any work. Then, two, auctioneer, having known that he didn't do any work, went ahead and accepted the payment. So we can ask your portion, why did you pay the auctioneer without? The auctioneer will also respond to the portion that he received payment for work no done. Take your portion. Auctioneer will take his portion. Honorable Chair, um, I think the auctioneer uh, should be paid because at the end of it, or if, uh, though it's delayed, uh, before getting all this money is paid into uh, government, teachers. so he has done some work and should, and should be paid. Director, is the auctioneer supposed to take 7% of the amount collected or 7% of the entire proceed, whether collected or not? He should take 7% of the cash on hand. That is what he has collected. Okay, we will come to the auctioneer. Auctioneer, have you taken 7% on amount you have retrieved cash collected or 7% of the entire uh, proceeds? Honorable Chair, is the entire, the money that we collect, that is, the, our 7% is based on the, 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 the amount of money we are in hand. So we don't take any other um, commission outside. I, I'm not clear about the answer. How much have you collected when, when as your payment? Auction, when we auction, mm. is the money that we have collected, our percentage is based on the amount of money we have in hand. So, assuming that you've collected 10,000, your commission is 7% of 10,000. 10, but if the total auction amounted to, let's say, 100,000, and you have collected only 10,000, your commission should be 7% uh, of the 10,000. Of the 10,000. Not the 100,000. Yes. And that is all you've collected. Yes, sir. Now, According to yourself, they have distributed the vehicles before they call you. What way did you do? Chief, um, Honorable uh, Chairman, the thing is, when we have uh, the authority letter from the Chief of Staff, there is a clause which says that saloon cars should be given, should be given to staff. That one, those who haven't benefited for search. And Sometimes when you get this, there are no uh, saloon cars inside. And I know that sometimes when you are doing advert, they say you should inform the, the staff if they are interested. They will come and bid for it. But in some, in some circumstances, sometimes when they feel like, when they don't get it, they feel aggrieved as if like there are cars that you are selling and uh, they didn't some people from outside come and buy them. So in this case, we sometimes, sometimes due to some are going on retirement, we normally consider them. Now, okay, if <laughs> we consider one or two people, but not, but not all of them per se. So in this case, in this case, you considered the, com the beneficiaries, considering that those people going on retirement, you did that in this particular auction? This particular auction, no. Because that is why I'm asking you. You have not done that work. That work was done by somebody. Because but you, you are saying that we consider people who are going on retirement that as if you are part of the distribution. That is what I'm asking you. You have not taken part in the distribution. You got a letter that you are the auctioneer. 
you didn't do any auction because the vehicle were already distributed. Your duty is to collect the money. Are you now being paid for only collection of monies? Honorable um, Chair, the thing is, we don't give all the... The vehicles are not... When the auditors came, they asked me this question. I told them that based on uh, the way we auction, the staff come together and we consider them. At least when they are coming, they say, okay, come and... So if they win the bid, then... No. Let me, let me advert you to the clause or uh, the paragraph read by the honorable member. Page 16, paragraph 37. Second sentence. We found, we found that all the vehicles were sold, all the vehicles were sold to staff of Minister of, Finance, uh, Minister of Food and Agriculture. In an interview with the auctioneer, Alex Smart, he indicated that the vehicles were already allocated to staff of MOFA, as well as prices at which they were to be sold before he commenced his task. So they have given the prices already. They have allocated the vehicle already. Yours is to use your, your company uh, position, letter here or whatever, to cover up so that you are paid 7%. Isn't the case? The audit came. They asked me, I don't know whether, they, they asked me, the staff, do they partake in the auctioning? And I told them, yeah, yes. Because most of the time, when we are doing uh, the... Man, man, because, man, please stop it there. Mm. You are not allowed to dispute what the Auditor General has found. Okay. You can't do it here. Yes, because when the audit was done, you were given ample time to respond to the findings, whether you failed or refused, or whatever was captured. This has been published long time. If you want to dispute the Auditor General's finding, go to court. It is only a court of competent jurisdiction that can set aside what the Auditor General has found. You cannot come and sit before this committee and dispute what has been found by an independent, objective, professional body. So find something better to tell us. Chairman, I want to refer to paragraph 38 of the report on page 16 and 17. Um, it is my understanding that when it comes to auctions, they have to be advertised in national dailies so that the process is seen to be competitive and, and free and fair and open to the general public. But if you read paragraph 38 on page 16 and 17, we are told that there are 24, 24 auctions were done. Only one of the 24 was advertised, and that's the one in hope. Now, even that one that was advertised, the, adver the adverts were placed in the Ghanaian Times from the third and 3rd and 4th of July, 2013. But the auction itself took place on the 4th and 5th. So it means whilst the auction, well, the publication was on, the auction was going on. Then if you also read further on page 17, that same paragraph, we are made to understand that of all the 24 auctions that happened, all 20, 23, the 23 that weren't advertised, the sale prices were at the reserved price because it looks like no auction took place. In the one instance where the advert was placed, and even in that case, the auction took place while the advert was running, we had a higher price than was reserved. I want to understand, as an auctioneer, and this goes to the auctioneer, as an auctioneer, are you clearly versed with the processes of auction? And why didn't you advertise the 23 auctions? Because that one, it's part of the law. Honorable Chairman, I did advert, but when the auditors came, they asked me about this question that they haven't found any attach of publication to my report that I submitted. 
And what I told them was, I didn't even, I didn't know that I have to attach the publication in the first place. Because anytime we do, we do publication, I just call them that I will, I will be auctioning in maybe next week, so they should do publication for me. Then they carried it out for me. So if not this audit, I will have order, order. So, are you a professional auctioneer? Yes, sir. Okay. Honorable George, do you have a follow-up question? So, okay, go ahead. Uh, oh. Ch Chairman, I, I want to find out from the auctioneer how long he's been a licensed auctioneer, how many auctions he's carried out previously, and why he did... And, and he should clarify from his answer. Did he public do the publications and fail to attach them, or he did not do the publications at all? Because from what he's saying, you can't make that clear. Were the publications done and you did not attach them, or the publications were not done at all? So I'll take it again. Are you a, are you a licensed auctioneer? Licensed. Are you a licensed auctioneer? How long have you been practicing? Which other auctions have you taken part in? And then answer this one. It's, all, it's a complex question. I, I, I want you to... Uh, Whenever a member is asking question, please, let's listen to the question. Let him finish asking the question before you take the answer. So go ahead. Honorable Chairman, I'm a licensed auctioneer. I started this practice around 2007. 2007. I've been auctioning for almost about, I've auctioned about four or five different ministries. That's it. Before this very one. Before this very one. You mentioned the names of the yes, ministers. Some are Ministry of Justice, Attorney General Justice. I've auctioned there before. And since the time, the, that's what I want to, and I'm sorry about the last. Oh, okay. Since the time the auditors, they gave me a procedure, a procedure which for, uh, with the auction uh, process follows. So I sat down with them and in fact, they gave me a thorough that any time we are doing in, uh, auctioning, after, that, after auctioning, I should make sure I attach the publication because that is the evidence that shows that the sales that I did was transparent. So I told them that this one, I'm, I'm very, very sorry because since 2011. Oshinia, stop it there. <laughs> did you or I, did you not okay. publish I, or advertise in a national newspaper? I published it. But it wasn't. Which national newspaper did you publish? It's time that we normally do our publication. So can you give yeah. us copies of the publication? We are talking about this particular. Uh, uh, Option. Mr. Mr. Chair, Honorable Chair, this this particular auction that the publication we were we were we were a team who has who have been doing this work. This particular auction that since 20, uh, 2011 to 2013, my subordinate who has been doing the publication on my behalf with him. So, and since I don't have. <laughs> oh, Jeanne, you, you are reminded that you are under oath. Okay. You have said just a few minutes ago that you indeed published or advertised this uh, particular ocean in Ghanaian times. Do you stand by that or you want to change your mind? Honorable. I have not all of them that I can, but I have part, some of the publications. Mr. Chairman, the Oceania is not being truthful with this committee. All committees of parliament belong to the, the Speaker of Parliament, who is the third most important person in this republic, the third in command. So you cannot come and sit here and just dance around questions. If you are not ready, as I said, you can ask us to defer this sitting 
you come back. Because from where I sit, yes, the public servants didn't do well, but you didn't do a professional work. I am an auditor by profession. If I was called by an accountant of an institution that is prepared the accounts, I should come and sign. And I sign. I don't think the ICA will forgive me. If I, any matter should crop up and I go and sit before them and I tell them that, oh, when I went, he had, they had prepared the accounts and I only appended my signature. Please, we are serious. But even, I mean, this, I don't think we have to waste much time on this question again. Honorable members, we will, we will interrogate this further. But I just want to remind the Oshina, as the ranking member said, you are under oath. That everything that you are saying is being recorded. If you don't know, let me show you. GTV is recording it, and Parliament itself is recording it. And every word you said can be used against you. So speak the truth, and nothing but the truth. So that at the end, we'll come to an amicable conclusion. That is a final reminder. Can I take um, Honorable Ras Mubarak? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, are you familiar with the guidelines on the disposal of goods and equipment. It's an auctioneer. Yes, I'm familiar with it. Would you therefore admit that what you've told this committee clearly is a clear and uh, deliberate attempt by you in collusion with other officers to set aside guidelines and the law and to do your own thing. Um, Mr. Chair, in any way I can say is as the Washine, who paid your commission to you? The, the, with the with the um, with the auction process with the proceeds, I deducted my 7% commission. The remaining money to, the amount remaining, where did you send it to? Who took to. the money from you? I paid it as non-tax, uh, which is uh, the Bank of Ghana, and uh, non-tax revenue accounts. You, Sorry. the receipts. The pay in slip, who did you send the pay in slip to? I made my report, I attached it to it and sent it to the director. Director, is the director, director here? Uh, director of engineering. Uh, director, where is the receipt, the pay in slip that the Oshine sent to you? Uh, Honorable Chair, we, we, we have a, a file on on ocean, so we keep all those documents on 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 that far are there. Uh, Did you receive that to... slip? Yes. Where is the slip, please? Sorry, honourable chair. I'm sure they should be in my office now because uh, we have all of them attached to our uh, on our files. So. Director, what is the duty of the accountant on the finance officer of the Ministry of Food and Agriculture? His duty is to collect or uh, handle all government's finances. Please, did you send that thing, um, the receipt to the finance officer? Please, no because I have a file on which I keep all these documents with the intention that when, when auditors come, they will be able to go onto that file 
and get all the data its information. Why I do so, so is that at every auction, I, I try to gather all the documents that you move with, with it as a folder and keep, and, and keep them. Because if I start to keep some receipts here, some other papers here, at the day when auditors come, getting them back might be a problem. So, Mr. Chairman, yeah. please, I just want to do this follow-up question. Yeah. So, Ms. Uh, Director, who is in charge of the Ministry of Finances? Because this thing was a financial matter, and I was expecting the finance officer to deal with this situation. Why were you keeping those files in your office? And I just want to also come to the finance director. I think the question will be directed to her. I, I think the finance director too, why were you not following the whole process? Uh, to government. I do not think that the money goes to the IGF account of the Ministry of Food and Agriculture. It goes to non-tax revenue account as a consolidated fund. What they should have done is to duplicate their receipts where a copy will be kept on the file that the director is talking about. The director of finance follow the, the rest of the processes. Yeah, I just want this information Mr. before Chair, she responds. Mr. Chair, I know it is an NTR account, but I just want to know how they keep their finances at the Ministry of Food and Agriculture. Because if you look at the constitution of this country, Article 178 to be specific, it tells us how we are supposed to manage the funds of Ghana and when and who shall authorize that payment at the various departments, municipal and aid agencies. I must say that MOFA is a complex area. Complex in the sense that uh, each call center is more or less autonomous with their own finance officer. So what I do generally, I prepare the consolidated account. So this uh, individual or nitty gritties about the various finances, I wouldn't know much if their, their finance office did not record or receive anything. I wouldn't know. Each call center has got its own account office, which doesn't come to me mm. as a director of finance. So, but when you are consolidating the account, you take the the the, the, various, the totals, the yes, sub, to, the total yes, of all these, yes. and consolidate them. You don't go deep into that because you have a finance officer in charge. Yes. Do we have the finance officer for this uh, department? Yes, please. They have an account department. We have him here. No, honourable. Mr. Oshinia, when did you conduct? the auction. Can you give me the date? I'm waiting for you. And if you like, I can just add it. And when did we pay the money into the account? Is it a 2011 one? 2011, 2013 one. 2013. 2013. Yes. 2013. I think, I don't have the date, but it will be in the uh, 2011 we did different sales, so I can't be sure of the specific one you are. You, are. you did a, you conducted the auction 2013. 2013. And you made payment somewhere 2014. Is that correct? Because we did about four or five sales, so I'm and not I'm sure And I'm very about. specific about that 2013, the 23 cars. 23 cars? Yes. Seems I have to consult because I don't have the this thing with me right now. So, but they invited you here, and you are aware of what you are coming to do. You should carry along your documents. You don't come here when we ask you a question. You are all over the air. You conducted the auction fourth and fifth, 2013, and you made payment into the accounts in 2014, I guess. Where were you keeping the money? Honorable, the money that I collected, I make sure I, any time I collect money, I make sure I send it to the non-tax revenue account. It may be circumstance that some of the uh, beneficiaries did not pay on time. 
you have functioned, you have done the job, and you have time limit, isn't it? And I'm saying that you conducted your auction on the 4th and 5th, and monies were paid in August 2014. Honorable Chair, most of the vehicles that sometimes we sell is a staff who benefits. Be a time limit. There should be a time limit. The fact that there are staff doesn't mean that you will not give them a time limit. And I'm very much aware, if you auction a car, certainly they will give you, you are paying within 24 hours or two days. That's what I want to know. So if they're not able to pay, and you have July up to August 2014, and you are telling me that you are not aware. Honorable Chair, sometimes dealing with <laughs> staff is a little bit... Look, you have just claimed here you are a professional auctioneer. Other than that, we will report you somewhere. I don't think you are doing that good here. The fact that you are dealing with staff doesn't mean that you should not do your work. You were paid commission. In any case, you even did that your commission before paying me. And you think that you can be playing with the public funds? Yes. One moment. Auctioneer, I think that you are telling us you are not a professional auctioneer. By the way, what's your name? No, you have a firm. Or oh, you don't trade under. That's smart. Sorry? Alex Smart. Smart, Smart. M A R T. Yes. Ah, but we have information. No, information that the company, when you were doing this particular uh, auction, you sold or you bought some of the vehicles. Is that true? I bought first time. You Under your company. You got Ah, no. auditor, can you confirm to me? I have, I think at uh, at that I came to my notice that the company causes something something love uh, limited. Mr. Key, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, it's happened to be love is the key. Not this one. No, not this one. Yeah. But love, another ocean. Yeah. Oceania. Mr. Chairman, please. Uh, that Mr. Chairman was was asking on the 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 one that was conducted in 2013. That one was not him. It was God's way match, and that money has been paid into the account. And I have the Bank of Ghana. Uh, statement on the on the uh, uh, NTA array to, to do the con the confirmation. So he did not conduct that audit. That, that, uh, that, that, that was different from this man. Yeah. Okay, okay. Mr. Auctioneer, uh, probably you don't have the auction sales law with you, but I'm sure that since that is your working tool, you are very familiar with its provisions, right? Would you describe an audit, uh, an auction, which is done at the instance of government, and the items purchased by uh, employees of government as an auction where the items were bought by people that are linked to the, uh, the vendor himself, in this case, the government. Would you describe such auctions that you have done as auctions where the items have been bought by people linked to the vendor here, the government himself? I'm, I'm doing this because in the law, if it has been bought by people linked to the vendor, being the government, then you cannot even take more than 3%. So I just want to know whether you would describe this auction as one falling within that category. Yes. Yes. So can you respond? Honorable Chair, please, the question is a little... Honorable <laughs> <laughs> Aban, yes. can you come down? Okay, let, let, me, me down. let me take you to of the auction sales law. And since it's your, uh, it's your familiar tool, I'm just going to remind you of what it says. Then I'll ask the question again. Post for sale is bought by or on behalf of the vendor. The remuneration of the auctioneer shall not exceed 3% 
of the amount at which the property has been so bought. If that amount is, is not even, the rest is not even necessary. But I'm asking, that's why I first asked you, would you consider this auction as one that falls within category of section 29? I would say, it's not that the vehicles were just allocated to, to the staff. You are coming back to what you have already confirmed. The report of the Auditor General says that you, the auctioneer, Alex Smart says, the vehicles were already allocated to the staff and the prices determined. And you even confirmed that. Before you came in. Now you, are, you want to tell us different thing? Honorable Chair, I'm not telling different thing, but I'm, I'm trying to uh, explain how the staff, they come in. Were you part of the allocation of the vehicle to the staff? No. Were the cars allocated before you were called? No, they did not allocate. Where were the cars allocated? The, the cars were, they are, they are, they are unserviceable. Most of them... We know, had, we know, we know that they are unserviceable. Most of them... We know the that they were unserviceable. Were the allocations made before you came in, or you know of the allocation, you are part of the process of the allocation? That's the question. The vehicle, as for the allocation, I'm not part of it. Exactly. So that is what we are saying. That's what we are saying, that the allocation, you are not part of it. Were you the one who determined the prices? The price is determined by me. Why did you tell the Auditor General that the prices were determined already before you came in? Okay. Why? The, 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 the state transport and the uh, flash house value, they normally give the price, uh, the value of the vehicles. Mm. And we, auctioneer, we sell it above the reserve prices that we've been given. Did you sell the vehicles above the reserve prices? Mm, yes, in this case, most of them are above the reserve prices. Can you provide the reserve prices for us? Can you provide the reserve prices and then the prices, the final prices at which I think that one is, is there. Can, you, can we get a reserve price for us to know whether you sold above the reserved prices? Honorable, when you look at the, the other ones that you, the, the authority letter comprises the reserve prices. It's been attached to it. When you, that, that is at the back of the authority letter that we, we are given. Mr. Auctioneer. Let me refer you again to section 18.2 of the auction sales law. I'm doing this because it's your working tool. That's what you have been doing, you have been using. Now, now listen. An auctioneer is liable unless it is otherwise agreed between the auctioneer and the vendor, vendor here being the government or Ministry of Food and Agriculture, for the due payment of, due payment to the vendor of the net proceeds of every sale of property, and my, my stress is here, within 10 days from the date of the sale of the property. Did you comply with this? You as a professional, working with this law every day, I'm just asking you as you, did you follow this provision in the auction sales law in conducting this auction? No, uh, Honorable Chair. So, would you agree to a suggestion that we should report your conduct to the board for your license to be revoked? Yes. Honorable Chair, uh, this one, <laughs> I beg, <laughs> since that time that I, all this thing came, it, we have, have changed the, <laughs> The whole process, and and for this, I beg you, this thing. <laughs> well, if you have changed, which means that you are, uh, you are, you have admitted that what you were doing first was wrong. So any punishment applicable then shall be meted. Is that what you, are, you want to say? Honourable uh, Chair, meaning uh, from now on was everything. 
is in the right order. So whatever I've done in the past should be forgiven. <laughs> well, you'll be laughing, but at the appropriate time, you'll not laugh. To take uh, the ministry back to paragraph 37. where it is stated that the contrary to section 18 of the guidelines for the disposable, disposal of goods and equipment, which says that... I think it's section 1.8. Section 1.8, sorry. Which says that in the interest of, of promoting probity, fair dealing and openness, procurement entities must not sell assets to staff unless arising from competitive process. Now, the, uh, the ministry allocated the staff, the, the vehicles to the staff. Is it not in control? Uh, honorable uh, MP's issue is right. He's right. That's why we, I'm saying that uh, after 2013, we have amended our ways and we are doing now the right thing. So, so, it, so it means that, uh, to me, we are only holding the, the auctioneer out of what you directed him to do. And I will say uh, the, 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 the money that were not paid on time was due to the controversy of this law that resulted in the, um, the money not being paid on time. And negligence on the part of uh, the uh, um, uh, head of entity. Yeah. Honorable Chair, oh. Honorable is right. I want to state very clearly that this setting calls a lot of attention to the need for us to look at the processes and procedure, and as far as our professional institutions are concerned. I think the sense I'm getting from the committee is that the auctioneer here barely understands the rules and the regulations guiding his own profession. And I think this is only the tip of the iceberg. It makes one to wonder how many more are in the system, even as we speak. But Mr. Chair, before I ask my question, permit me to read the definition of an auction because I think it is very important for both the ministry and the rest of us, and as well as the Ghanaian public. It says, an auction is a method of selling in a public forum through open and competitive bidding where the items are publicly displayed and potential buyers bid with the highest bidder taking custody of the asset. This is the definition of an auction. By and large, what I've seen throughout this report clearly negates the very definition of an audit. Now, Mr. Chairman, I earlier wanted to refer to page 39, which I think is irrelevant. Because of the twist, uh, page 17, paragraph 39, because of the twist I find in the excuse that is being proffered by the Minister of Food and Agriculture. With your indulgence, I read paragraph 39. Officials of the Ministry of Agri in the Northern Region explained that auctions in the region were not advertised due to past occurrences of auctions resulting in violence as a result of interference from political party activists. According to MOFA, MOFA officials, these persons hijacked the auction process, seized items on sale, and assaulted prospective buyers, auctioneers, and officials of the disposing entity conducting the exercise. Due to these reasons, the auctions were not advertised, and the vehicles were allocated to staff. Mr. Chairman, it is clear. So if I may ask MOFA, can they give us an instance or a, a record or a police report showing that political activists had engaged in the conduct 
that they say gave them enough reason to allocate the vehicles to staff. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Honorable Chair, uh, this information came out when the auditors visited our regional office in Tamale and came with that report. Uh, I do not have any, any, any documentary proof in my office to contact regional office in Tamale. If, if they have any, 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 any document on them. But it, it was a report that was, was brought down when the auditors came to Tamale. So, Dr. Park, any follow-up? Yes, Mr. Chairman. I would like uh, if MOFA officials indeed had a chance to look at this report before it, goes, it got to the committee. Because my assumption would have been that a request would have been made to get some authentication to this claim, because the claim has implications. It is being used to justify the allocation of the vehicles to staff. Uh, we didn't contact them, but from our, our list that we saw in the, in the report, it was only one vehicle. That was oceaned in the north, in Tamale. Dr. Park, your last follow-up. Yes, if I may. But, Mr. Chairman, I would want to put it to the director that the accusation being leveled against political activists was only a ploy to assign the vehicles or allocate the vehicles to staff. Does he agree or not? Honorable, uh, I may not be able to, 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 to uh, admit uh, his, his uh, Honorable's uh, uh, claim because it didn't happen in Accra office. Like I said, it was it happened in Tamale office. So that will not have any effect on other other agents at all. Director, the first question or the second question was that: Did you, per chance, have read this report before the committee invited you to come? If you have. Have you made any effort to find out from the regional office if the claim they are making is actually true? Uh, Honorable, I did uh, read the, the, the whole report. And I have ever had that such information from Tamale. But I didn't, I have not re re requested for any official uh, reports to uh, from uh, Tamale office. Uh, looking at the valuation process, and I'm looking at how the vehicles were valued, uh, the report indicates that it was done by a government valuer. And it presupposes that once it was done by a government valuer, the values that are assigned are perfect, 100%. I have caused, from the developments that are coming up now, I have caused to doubt that and believe that there should be a, a second re-examination recommended by this committee, that even if the government valuer does it, another, of, uh, another valuer should do a second thought. The question that is following up then that, where they had a situation where payments where uh, prices were getting higher, then can they explain why they should not be surcharged for any losses, assuming a notional loss, for not bidding properly for the government to get higher the, than the reserve price? See, uh, one may want to ask, what does the law say? That you can auction. So once the valuation has been done by government valuer. I think that's uh, state, and trans yeah. state transport. If you sell at that price, you have not violated the law. If you sell above that price, better. It is only when you sell below that is what have an issue. That is the point the director is making. Now, the follow-up question is that the reserve price. All other, all other auctions that were done publicly following the right procedures, 
ended up we haven't hired the reserve. So going by that, there was a high probability that the government will have got more than the, the reserve price that is indicated. More than, because the precedents had been that any time they properly advertise and it became competitive, then the government gets higher than the reserve price. On the accounting principle of notion, then I am saying there might have been a notional loss because they didn't advertise. And therefore, they have to be surcharged for the loss. Are you going to use that it should have been 10% above the reserve price or 20%? So the, the issue of surcharge doesn't come in here. They have already admitted that at that pass uh, were not right. So from day one, they have admitted. So once they've sold the, the, the vehicles at the government valued uh, prices, I think that we should not take them too much on, on that. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman. No, follow up question here. Please, I have a, a document from. Uh, let me give a follow up question. So, so, yeah, so, so that particular point, I, I'll just uh, okay, ask you to. Uh, uh, that is the point four, a uh, paragraph four. He is, I mean, following from yeah, the auctioneer, this is addressed to the auctioneer. He is kindly requested to endeavor to auction the vehicles above the reserve prices. That is categorically stated. Endeavor, endeavor, endeavor. endeavor. Yeah. Above the reserve price. Okay. Okay. Uh, Chairman, thank you. Chairman, my question goes to the director of uh, agri Director, uh, who engages the agent to do the valuation? Uh, the ministry rise to uh, state uh, intercity uh, transport to, to do the, the, the first valuation. Uh -huh. And then after that, when we apply to the uh, Office of the Chief of Staff, they also send a second team to come and assess and then give a, 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 a second uh, opinion. Okay, so that, so that if you engage the service of an agent to do valuation for you, you will pay? Yes. You will pay yes. for the service? Yes. And did you pay? Normally, normally... Uh, the Oceania will prepay. The Oceania will prepay and bring us the receipts for, for, for the ministry to refund. At this stage that you were engaging the agent for evaluation, you didn't have Oceania yet. You didn't even know who, who, who will be your Oceania. Peace. Peace at the end, yeah. If you look at the, the report, the auctioneer makes two deductions from the proceeds. One, his commission, and then the payment to the STC for valuation before he pays the net to the non-tax revenue. Have, have you noticed it? Yes. So, so how do you reconcile the, the first statement and this answer? Honorable, like I said, these, these issues are mistakes that we've done in the past. Now it seems that we are doing the, the, the right thing. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, so I'll take it that uh, the auctioneer goes to the SRC. They, they engage the uh, SRC and they determine the values for, the, for, for you. They just, yeah, by the answer you have given us. Uh, please, no. No, because a second opinion is done by the state, chief of staff's office. The first valuation as a guide. Are you very familiar with the Financial Administrative Act? Please, yes. From what my colleague said, if you look at 
the Financial Administrative Act 2004, Section 22, 1. It states that all, mon all public monies collected shall be paid in gross. I want to emphasize on the word gross into the public funds account and no disbursement shall be made from the money collected except as provided by an enactment. Please, are you aware of this? Honorable, I'm aware. But Chief of Staff's office also says uh, seven <laughs> that proceeds accrued from the auction sales should be paid into the non tax. tax uh, good. Okay, there's a. I'm coming. No, there, there's a point which shows that the auctioneer should be paid his, his uh, commission. So. <clears throat> Honorable, I'm lost because if we pay all the money into the consolidated fund, how are we going to pay the Oshimia? Do you have the Constitution of Ghana with you? Do you have the Constitution of Ghana with you? I have. Okay, go to Article 178. No, 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 I don't have it here, but, but, but I have one. Uh, um, please, can you give, can you give some? I don't have it here. For me? Article 178. Article 178 of Ghana Constitution. No, Article 178. Because you wanted to know how you were going to take the money from the consolidated fund. And I'm giving you the direction how you can take money from the consolidated fund of this country. That is where I directed you to Article 178 of the Constitution of Ghana. Honorable. Yes, it says no money shall be redrawn from the consolidated fund except to meet uh, to to meet expenditure that is charged on the on that fund by this constitution or by an act of parliament b where the issue of those monies have been authorized by an appro appropriation act uh, by a sub a supplementary estimate ap approved by resolution of pa parliament passed. I were you, yes, the whole uh, of the article 178. But 78A is. Honorable uh, Chair, uh, we don't have access to the auction law. But in practice, in practice, I, I wish the honorable here would read, you were quoting from, from the auction sales law. Yes. I, we don't have a copy here, but I am sure that it might be provision for this, because in practice, that has been what we do. But when we collect IGF, when we collect IGF, the, the law says we should pay into consolidated fund before we apply for their retention. No, it is not, this is, this is different, because this wasn't coming to the ministry. This one is going to the auctioneer, who has been approved by the chief of staff with a letter to come and do that auction business. And for his entitlement, he, he does it and he takes it and pays back. 
Well, well, let's, honorable members, let's interrogate this further. They can pay into the non tax revenue account. So that is clear. Now, with the auction, the process of this auction, no amount of this come to the ministry. There is no law that says that the ministry should retain so much percentage, which means that the entire 100 percent, as read by the Honorable Kanka, must go into the non tax revenue account, which is the consolidated fund. Now, expensive expenses prior to the auction, and for that matter, the proceeds, who bear that cost, those expenses? I think, Auditor General, can you help us? Let's find out who bears that, so that we cannot be blaming the ministries all the time. A portion of that money is used to, a proportion of the proceeds is used to defray the cost of the uh, auction. Auditor General. The consolidated fund. So if there is any expenditure relating to it, it should also be claimed from the consolidated fund. The 7% retention is by the Ministry of Food and Agriculture themselves. They have given themselves that power. If you look at their letter, it is they who are saying that you are entitled to 7%. And even that, one cannot interpret it to mean that we do hold a portion of the process contrary to the constitutional provision. That is our position. So, um, Auditor General, by your explanation, okay, the, the total 100% of the proceeds must go into the consolidated fund. What, what should be the process to, to get the money, yeah? whatever percentage, I don't care about that, and then whatever uh, cost again, like advertisement or whatever. Once we have already approved budget for that MDA, that they don't come back to for approval. Don't forget that this parliament is the only board fund. So, for instance, Minister of Food and Agriculture, we have already appropriated amount for them, which were for specific items. Then, during the course of the year, this auction take place. They cannot go beyond what we have appropriated to them. How do they get the money for this? Mr. Chair, two ways already has it, then that is what they should use. If it doesn't have it, then this is money for the consolidated fund. And when you are appropriating, there is also miscellaneous under which Ministry of Finance administers. For such expenditures, Ministry of Finance gives approval or warrant or financial clearance for such payments. And they know any expenditure which they don't have in their budget, they know how they take it from finance. You're so taking the explanation all MDAs, government, ministry, department, and agencies must take note that you don't spend out of the proceeds of the auction. When you start a process of auction, that the cost you have to apply directly to the Ministry of Finance. If you already don't have that allocation in your budget, you apply to Ministry of Finance, and the two processes are, will be going on concurrently. By the time the proceeds hit the consolidated fund, Minister of Finance give you a warrant to take money back from the consolidated fund to pay the auctioneer, so that the auctioneers don't hold the money uh, before they even pay themselves first, before subsequent one come, they send it to the uh, Bank of Ghana. So I think that should be the process. Right, thank you very much. Director. Uh, I'm confused a bit. Uh, this report was signed by Auditor General, and he's given us a guide as to what to do. And at page 12, it says that, page, page 12, uh, the third column, number one, two, three, four, five. It says, accountant pays on Oshinier's commission and, and the deposits the remaining proceeds into the non-tax revenue account. So I'm lost as to where, where we, uh, this one also is telling us. Yes, Auditor General. Auditor General, we're not giving your boys, guidance. Your, your boys are giving some. We are not giving guidance here. We are documenting their system, what they do. Mm. It's not a guidance. There's a difference between we providing guidance as against documenting your processes. 
The the chat the chat the chat says flow chat of the disposal process. It is not complete if that disposal process is of the uh, Ministry of Food and Agriculture. It's not clear. So they may assume that this is the correct flow chart, not as it pertains in their ministry. So that is it. So it's, it's going to be a guide to all of us. Um, no, where's my, no. Uh, a certain portion of the law uh, deals with the retention. And I think we have to put it in perspective so that they do not think that when they are doing auction, that affects the government and the proceeds must, goes to, must go to the consolidated fund. They are just going to use the auction sales law to apply. In that regard, the auction sales law will have to abide the superior imperatives of the Constitution. And so uh, the auction sales law deals with all auctions. So if you are dealing with a private man who says, go and auction these things for me, you can uh, retain and give him the next proceed. But when it comes to selling government property, then you have to follow as the Constitution stipulates. I think that is clear. But, but does the auction uh, law differentiated between auction for government, this is the process, auction for private sector, this is the process? It does not. But the legal principle is that where a specific law is made for a specific item, that prevails. And in this case, especially when we are dealing with a, an act of parliament as against a constitutional provision, the constitution prevails. So what we are saying is that, yes, in ordinary sales, auction sales law, or in ordinary auction, the auction sales law applies. But when it gets to the use of that law to apply to gov the sale of government property, where the proceeds will have to go to the consolidated fund, then you cannot retain. But you have to send everything to the consolidated fund and use the appropriate procedure to get that money. Uh, uh, Honorable member, I'm, I'm having a different view that this law, the ocean law, is enacted to make the provision of the constitution applicable um, or to be practicable. I'm saying this because the process as explained by the Auditor General should have been the, the, the right process, but how practicable it is. So that is it. Let me give you one example. Parliament passed law, which we call Petroleum Revenue Management Act, where a fund was created, Petroleum Holding Fund. The Petroleum Revenue is for government. But Parliament again, and all government revenue must hit the consolidated fund before any disbursement. But again, Parliament passed a law to say that proceeds of sale of petroleum product must hit the petroleum holding fund, then distribution is made from there. A portion go to stabilization fund, a portion go to heritage fund, then a portion go to the budget, which we call annual budget funding amount. So, we can't say, because this is the Constitution says so strict. So the laws are made to ensure that whatever is said in the Constitution is now made practicable. Thank you very much, Honorable. I think uh, with all due respect, we are here also to learn, not necessarily to make t uh, mistakes known. I would be very much grateful if what the law says, we, we, we make aware of it so that we don't go and sin. I, I don't know, because what the the public the financial uh, management act is saying, we should bank it in gross within 24 hours. Now, unlike the IGF ordinary IGF, where the retained uh, fund is also given back to the ministry, this one it goes there, nothing comes back to the ministry. In this case, if we are faced with such a problem. How are we going to pay the commission so that we don't also flood the law, please? Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, if you could uh, indulge me to go through this process. Um, 
because the director over here was made a comment about a letter they received from the Flagstaff House. And I think most of the time when we see a letter from the Flagstaff House, that's when we panic. If you have a copy of this letter that they normally send to the auctioneers, please, let's go, let's go through the process. I will skip and go to page uh, uh, item number three on the letter from the Flagstaff House. Uh, the two letters are the same. The one from February, dated February uh, 16, 2015. This is a, a routine letter that you normally get. Uh, most of the time when you go to the ministries, you'll find somebody who would tell you they have 25 years experience. But what I tell them is you have one year's experience repeated 25 times. There's a big difference in that. Let's go to number three. It says where he's unable to meet the deadline of this auction, he'll be required to inform this office, giving reasons for his inability to auction. Kindly note that if he fails to do this, the authority given him to auction the said vehicles will be nullified. So that is one. Then you go to number four. It says he is kindly requested to endeavor to auction the vehicles above reserve prices. So when this letter comes from the Flagstaff House, you, the ministry, you are supposed to make sure that he is uh, abiding by what is here, not the auctioneer himself. Now go to number five. Where a serving officer, okay, we've gone through that. That is uh, or the saloon car. Let's go to number six. He's obliged to inform this office by the comprehensive report on details of the implementation of the uh, directive 14 days after sales before separate letter for registration and transfer may be affected. Number seven, proceeds from the auction sales shall be paid into non-tax revenue account, and it gives the account, Bank of Ghana. Number eight, he is to effect change of ownership and re-registration of the vehicles within three months after full payment, having shown evidence of payment of the central bank payment order and detailed statement of account. And number nine, he is obliged to notify the auctioneer's board of the agreed date of the auction. Who is supposed to make sure these are fulfilled by the auctioneer? Now he has already paid himself. But a passing comment you made was, oh, he brought a letter from the chief of staff. The, the conditions of the auctioneer are determined by the law, right? And besides, he is also appointed by the chief of staff to come and do the auction. Yes, sir. You see, this is where I, that's why I went through the pains to read this letter. This letter was sent to you. And he's supposed to go through all these. And if you, the chief director, would take the responsibility, who is supposed to make sure that he fulfills all these? Um, Honorable Chair, I think that uh, I just want to make a remark here that we have agreed as a team that in the past, the period covered by this audit, that procedures were not followed, okay. for which we apologized. Okay. This directives and all those things should have been followed to the letter by the chief, uh, the chief director and his subordinates, which were not done which we've apologized, even the debate on the payment. Because if we follow what has been said here, it has not been defined clearly who pays the auctioneer. And I believe the employer pays the auctioneer, which is the chief of staff. If the ministry had chosen an auctioneer, the auctioneer would surely ask him, how will I get my pay? But because he just appointed, he brings a letter, I've been appointed to auction these vehicles. So. I think that we now have to look critically and let the auctioneer explain 
whether the conditions have been defined to him, how he will be paid when he appears to auction the vehicles. Because we will have to make it clear that we will not allow that deduction so that the procedure goes clearly and everything paid to a consolidated fund. And he follows with his employer uh, for, the, for his uh, expenses. expenses. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, my last question here. We are talking about... Chairman, Chairman I, I, I think that we... Honorable Ejekum tried to make a point, which you rightly stated should be addressed to the committee in close sitting. But I think that for the benefit of what is going on, which is a live broadcast of this transmission, and commentary that is already ongoing in some angles or some areas of social media, it's important that we state, for the record, that this parliament, uh, this, this committee of parliament is a speaker's committee, and it's a very, very serious matter and job we're doing here. If you look at the demeanor of the director for Agric Engineering and the minister and the chief director, from the onset, they admitted wrongdoing and pled with us to treat them with some, with some, with some institutional wrongdoing and plead them with mercy. And they have even gone ahead to, to let us know that they've taken remedial action such that in subsequent reports of the Auditor General, we will not see same. Same cannot be said for the auctioneer who has been caught on TV and people are making comments about the work of this committee that we're treating him with kid gloves because he's been captured on live TV laughing at some of the answers, the questions we've asked. Very, very serious infractions of law, and he's laughed about it. So Honorable Mafo spoke about the fact that this committee is feared. It appears that that fear is missing on the auctioneer, and he thinks that it's business as usual. And so I think that, Mr. Chairman, it's important that we state for the record that we're not here to joke and just do a rubber stamp, but we're here to ensure our oversight, the oversight responsibility of Mr. Speaker's Parliament to ensure that the executive does things right. If the ministry that worked with him is remorseful, I don't see why he would put up an aptitude of nonchalancy. It doesn't augur well for this committee's work. Thank you very much. Committee to what probably you are reading on social media. But I don't think that the, the opinion of the public should be that we, as a committee, are not treating or are treating the auditees that are appearing before the committee with the kid uh, gloves. Look, I don't know whether they are expecting us that we should call the police to come and pick the man here now. For them to see, say that we are actually doing proper work. No, we are operating under rules. We are operating under mandates. As I said earlier on, we have powers of a high court. We don't have power to prosecute. We will recommend. And our recommendation is sub subject to what? Approval of parliament, the entire house. So those comments could go on. But I think that it's good you brought it to our attention. We are still on, uh, uh, um, live on, on air. And they are listening to us. We are saying that we don't have any power at this sitting to cause the arrest of any auditee. We are not here to, to do that, because if we do that, we're going beyond our powers as a committee of parliament. But we are serious with what we are doing. The, the issue is not with us being serious or not being serious. It's with those appearing before us. Because you won't sit in the high court and laugh at the judge when he's speaking. So, so let's, let's end it there.